you know, I know there's a lot of stuff going on in the news and, uh, and a lot of distractions, but the stuff that we're talking about tonight is important. It's stuff that we all have to pay attention to. And there's one other aspect of it that we were discussing with Earth Changes that I want to get into. Chris, Christina actually brought this up, and I'm sure Joe probably knows about this, the Ibex ribbon, I think it's called. But space weather. Space weather. Hmm. Christina, how, how connected do you think space weather is to earth changes, earthquakes, the rate, some of the radiation levels, you know, readings and stuff worldwide? What, what say you about all this? I know that they're connected enough that we need to pay attention to them. And usually what I cover is nuclear issues. And in the, uh, the last few months, we've had a couple instances of like things blowing up at, um, at nuclear plants around the U.S. In fact, on September 16th, we had, I believe it was six plants. One was in Canada, five were in the U.S. that were all shut down um, because of electrical problems. And the one at Fermi was the one that I was really paying attention to uh, because they, they had a significant problem there. And I had called the NRC and I basically got, you know, just lied to ad nauseum. Um, I put the phone call up on YouTube and uh, it, you can check it out with their spokesperson, Victoria, the chick that doubles as a belly dancer, that one. Yeah, um, true, true story. It's all on YouTube. Um, so, you know, they, we had like one day where six plants went down all with electrical, electrical problems, all pretty much like in the Midwest. I think one might have been in Arizona. Palo Verde might have had a problem around the same time. And now we've got, you know, Indian Points had a couple of problems, another electrical problem last night, possible explosion there. I still haven't found out what exactly went down there. And I know if I call the NRC, they'll just lie to me anyway. So I'm trying to find out just from like people in the area what, uh, what happened. But with the power outages and these electrical problems and, you know, earth changes. And then if you, if you pay any attention to space weather and auroras, you may have noticed in the last couple of months, northern lights are being seen all over the place. You know, they were seeing them like every day in Michigan and Minnesota for a week, a couple weeks back. Um, huge energetic events from the sun. And sometimes we have these auroras that happen and there is no like forecast from space weather that they're going to occur. So this is like, um, you know, energies that are coming from space that they're not expecting to see. And there's been like, you know, some weird gamma ray bursts and other stuff. If you follow suspicious observers on YouTube, then you probably have an idea what I'm talking about. And within the last week, they have come out with uh, news. And it was originally, I think, space.com that had written about the possibility of um, a, a cluster that they were measuring light, a light source coming from that they thought there might be something orbiting a planet, and this was a few months back, and so they're using an array now that is in New Mexico or Arizona where they have like 60 telescopes that are focused on this area, and what they found was a possible brown dwarf, and what they had always expected is that they would be able to see a brown dwarf if there was one there, if they used uh, infrared imaging, and this isn't actually showing up on infrared. And, you know, a, a paper was written on it. I have the um, the paper, a link to the paper on the Radchick page on Facebook, and I'll put it out on Twitter again after this show for people who want to read it. This is being widely discussed, and in fact, the scientists and astron astronomers, they're not the first ones to bring this up, obviously. People have been, like, talking about, you know, possibility of Nibiru and things like that coming into our solar system, and it turns out that this possible brown dwarf is actually in our heliosphere oh geez. I mean, did, that's did, how close this thing is and whether or not you know could this have some kind of gravitational effect on our plate tectonics is this causing some of the earth changes that we're seeing is it causing some of the temp changes crazy weather or is this other environmental problems you know how how much is coming from where and then what are you going to do about it anyway you didn't uh you guys didn't tell uh chris about the Brown dwarf, did you? Please. No, it, I didn't Papa, tell him about didn't. Nibiru. I didn't. Shh, uh, no. Quiet, quiet. No. No, Nibiru. Don't do that. 
there's been an energetic area of space called the, the ribbon or they call it a fluffy cloud and ibex ribbon, magnetic ribbon, a bunch of different names for it that they've known about for decades. Um, that this was in existence, and they think we might be passing through some of the particles. So, is you know, is that a possibility? Is well, the, something from outer a, space affecting what's happening here on Earth? I think that's a much bigger possibility than how many people are driving SUVs <laughs> and things like that. Okay, um, but yeah. there's a guy. His his name is Lance. And he had a YouTube um, account, and it's still up. It's called the United Knowledge. And he had been following these, like, booms that people had been hearing and plotting earthquakes over the last number of years. And it always seems to happen around the same time of the year. It starts around September. It, it goes through about April. All of a sudden, we have fireballs all over the place, and we have, like, um, you know, these earthquakes, large earthquakes – that are happening or earthquakes in places that we wouldn't expect them to. And after tracking it for a number of years, he said, this has to be something coming from space in order to affect our planet the same time every year, the way that it's been doing. And I did an interview with him in I think 2013 and he kind of dropped out of sight. He's still around. I talked to him once in a while, but he was like, you know, I could only go so far with this without any money, like doing my own research and like, I have to work. And do other things. So, you know, my stuff is up there for people who want to look at it. And if you have any interest in how any how many of these things could be connected, I think he's done probably by far the best work on it out of anybody that I've seen that just discusses earth changes. And his YouTube channel is called The United Knowledge. And the interview I did with him, I think it was called Boom Doom. I think that's what I titled it because it was all about the booms that were happening in Clintonville, Wisconsin at the time, Niagara Escarpment, which has stopped since. 